G'day guys, welcome back to another Thursday night and our weekly live stream. So we do have Jason back this week after his hunting trip, so he's going to fill you in on all the uh, shenanigans he got up to and a few campfire stories he had. So we'll just bring him in right now. Hey Jason, how are you? What's going on man? Welcome back. back. Civil- I'm back. Yes, you too, back to civilization. So. Yeah. So just before we start, we're just going to say, if you can smash that uh, subscribe button to get our subscribers up, they actually went up quite a bit this week, so I was pretty happy about that. Also, if you can sign up to uh, the Patreon, Jason and me both have Patreon, that every cent does help for both our shows, and we're on Facebook and Instagram. All the links will be in the description uh, after the show. So let's just jump straight into it. So... Well, I guess, first thing, how was your hunting trip? People have been asking after it. I know. Um, <laughs> I guess quite uneventful, to be brutally honest. Um, you know, I used to go to a forest down south here in New South Wales that got burnt out, so that's a, obviously a no-go because it's, uh, you know, you can't hunt there anymore. So we decided to try on another forest, and, you know, we've got I've got a bunch of friends that have got their R licenses, and, you know, if you invite, like, 15 you might get three or four come so this time (laughs) everybody came not all 15 but there's about 13 guys and pretty much all of them came bar one so uh, honestly probably one of the best trips i've been on just for you know talking shit around the fire man that's that's what i love just as much as the hunting is getting back in the afternoon cooking up some food getting the fire going um and yeah everybody got on some people hadn't met each other before and man, it was awesome. It was awesome. I saw a bunch of a few deer actually. Um, I saw one on the second morning. No, it's just I saw uh, three driving around because we're just doing a bit of scouting. Never been there before. And then on the next morning, when I thought, all right, I'm going to drop into this pine, uh, I saw one. It came over. It just bounced over the little crest in this nice thick pine. Um, I could probably see about 50 meters. And then it didn't win me or anything. And then it went back in the one o'clock position like it just ran off uh so i was quite disappointed i almost had a shot on it i just couldn't see it between the pine and then i was coming down to some blackberries this is about probably two hours three hours later i was heading along uh in this pine yeah from one side to the other and then all of a sudden i thought oh how am i going to navigate this blackberry coming up and then all of a sudden i looked my head up and the wind had been swirling all day man it was the worst ever and i saw like four or five does just running off man so it was disappointing it was cold oh shit it was cold man um i (laughs) i've invested in one of those diesel heaters you know like from china man like um so i'm going to try one of those out like a little two kilowatt diesel heater for the i had the swag i don't i don't like the swag in winter i'm going to go back to my tent in winter so um, i just think it's better you can get changed get your thermals off clean yourself up um so i'm going to I'm going to try one of them. I'm going to go to the dark side to the communist regime of China. You know, like I said, my uh, <laughs> my comfort in winter time far outweighs my dislike of the Chinese administration. So um, <laughs> we'll see what happens, man. But yeah, it was good, man. Like like 13 guys all getting on like a house on fire. That's what it's all about. Probably the best hunting trip I've been on, man. We saw a bit. Um, yeah, it was awesome, man. Can't complain. But no deer, unfortunately. So we might try somewhere else in the next four weeks and we'll see how we go. Yeah, well, as long as you had a good time. Well, that's actually what is going to lead into tonight's topic is something you talked about, the campfire. But Mm. um, just before some of this, uh, one thing I want to show you is I've been playing with this new torch. I always like to have a bit of a show and tell each week. So I've been playing with this new power beam torch. This thing is amazing. The beam is so strong. I'm pretty damn impressed with this. It can go up to 1,300 metres. So I'm going to be doing a bit more extensive testing on it. Uh, it's not bad. You, know, you turn it on, off at the end here, and it's got the different settings here. So, yeah, it's not a bad thing. And also, we talked, we actually, um, when you weren't here last week, we talked a bit about cleaning stuff. And I've got, I really do like this real avid stuff. So, this is another small cleaning kit I got that I just chuck in my glove box. So, it's got pretty much everything you need to clean your rifles, and it just sits in my glove box. Because you always, as you know, you always leave stuff. Uh, uh, there's always something you forget, and I've forgotten my cleaning stuff several times. And while I was looking around for um, a few products this week, um, I did get another real avid one because I don't have a big cleaning kit for home, like a just a big all-out kit. 
So I thought this actually tickled my fancy. A full-on cleaning kit, but it comes with a rubber mat joined to it, so which mm. I think is pretty damn good. So that's something else. Um, I'll probably do a review. Well, I will do a review on all those soon. So I'm pretty happy about that. So finally I've got a big cleaning kit with everything I need. So I'm, I'm really happy about that. Yeah. So, no, nah, it's been... I'm jealous. I'm jealous. Um, it looks like the live <laughs> stream went off uh, without a hitch. I thought I was the star of this party, but it looks like you did a pretty good nah. job last, uh, last week. So. Yeah, it was good, yeah. Yeah, I pretty much lost my voice talking for just over an hour and a half nonstop. But, yeah, it did go off really well. And i got to thank everyone for uh, joining in into the comments. And I'm so sorry about the glitch. I didn't uh, just jump and miss the whole section out in the centre. But there's hundreds of comments I could not have kept up. So it's great that they're laying comments already. So what we are going to do is read some out. But what we decided to do is to give back to our Patreons. We're going to start off by by um, reading the questions from our Patreon pages, and then we'll get to uh, just the questions in the uh, comments section here because uh, the Patreons is what really makes the sh our shows uh, go. Without them, we'd be pretty much stuffed. They really do help out a lot, especially when I've got to buy ammo and everything. Every cent actually helps and targets. So... I've got a question here, and Jason's got questions as well. The first one is from Trevor Hill. Uh, G'day, mate. Was just wondering uh, what powder you are running with your A tips in your latest video. Really impressed with what went on, uh, what you got with the 153 grainers. Yep. Well, I released a video today of a review on the A tips, I shot it long distance. Um, I, I was really impressed with these uh, tips. They were fantastic. So I got uh, first round hits at 1,000 metres. Uh, 500 metres was pretty easy to get. So I was just running, I think it was Alliant 17, and I can't remember exactly how many grains I was running. Just check the uh, manual in the 6.5. So that uh, they work really well, these A tips, the aluminium tipped rounds for heart, for um, for target shooting they're definitely a very nice tip okay they're a bit more pricey than other ones but no they worked well you can go and check out the video which is out there so mm. jason what have you got mine's just a simple one he was talking about because i just took out the um uh seven mil magnum now sorry i've just accidentally lost it but here we go uh he just this is from i'm just having a look sorry you go one more i just had i had it up and yeah. then i just lost it Okay, this is from James. What do you think the best scout uh, the best scout rifle? I'm looking at the Ruger Gunsight Scout or the Mossberg MP MVP Scout. Only down only downside I see for the Ruger is it is a single stack magazine. Uh, just yeah, whatever you can share would be amazing. Have you ever used any? I look at the Steyr, but really just can't justify three grand. Thanks heaps. Well, I have used the Ruger. That's the only one. And it was a nice, solid rifle. It worked well. Um, a good, solid one. I do know what you mean about the single stack. But out of those two, out of the uh, Ruger or the Mossberg, I'd go the Ruger every single time. The Mossberg, uh, I, don't think, I don't know if there's an importer for Mossberg in Australia anymore. Yeah, right. So, yeah, your turn. Right. I've got it here. Yeah, so Aaron just – I went on the last hunting trip and I, I sold my 308. So um, I got a new 7 mil Ram Mag and he says, when are we going to see a build-up video on the 7 mil uh, Ram Mag? Like, you know, I don't really do reviews. That's Aaron. I've told him about 100 times. I don't know how he does what he does. I just couldn't do it because – it would just annoy the shit out of me of not wanting to upset people <laughs> that have got certain types of rifles or if a gun doesn't perform, you know, you got to say good things and bad things. Ah, I'll leave that to Aaron, to be honest. Um, <laughs> yeah, so it's it's just a standard ticker, the 7 mil Ram Mag. I've got the, the, the Zeiss V4, 4 to 16 by 44, um, and I just, I just put it like a little pick rail. I think it's a Seekins rail. Uh, on the bottom of a flat rail just to take my uh, bipod, my Atlas BT-46. But, yeah, man, there's not really much to talk about a build. I am going to run the 162-grain ELDX. 
um, with AR2225 powder. So I'm hoping it's going to work. Uh, I'm hoping going to. I'm hoping well the 300 wind mag and 7 mil rem mag are going to run on AR triple two five. Seems to be the fastest. Uh, the rest of my rifles 260 and 243, which I've been seeing a few more comments uh, about the humbled glorious 243 in the comments again. Uh, I'm running 2209 on the 260 and 243 with really good results, especially in the 260. I'm going to go back to the 87 grain VMAX on the next trip. If you're watching some of the videos I put out, like about my rabbit hunting, some of you guys may know, um, check out AHP Outdoors. But um, I've been having a few problems with velocity. Uh, it'll be really close. And then, like I said on previous shows, it just blows out like 100 feet a second. So um, the Blitz King are good. The 70 grain, it whacks the rabbits like you wouldn't believe, just like turns them inside out. But I'm going to go back to the 87 grain VMAX, hopefully again with 2209. Um, yeah, so... Should be good, but yeah, seven mil mag, just a basic caliber, mate. Um, never had it before. Um, I did try and shoot a uh, rabbit, but unfortunately, uh, I missed. <laughs> I missed, but um, you know, again, I'm just using those Winchester. I'm just using some factory until I can actually go and do some load testing for it, and then get the best out of it. I forgot to lighten the trigger; it was heavy as shit, and pff, no good. So I need to do a few things before I go on this rabbit hunting trip in the next couple of weeks to get things sorted. Oh, awesome. And the last Patreon one here is from Mick. Uh, I'm always hearing, uh, put more money into your scope than your rifle. What is your biggest scope uh, rifle to scope cost ratio? Well, a lot of people do uh, think that, especially over in Europe. Normally they spend twice as much on a scope than they do on a rifle. Now we are, have got a video coming up very soon and we're going to just talk about scopes and we'll have a lot of samples here to show you from uh, entry level all the way up to uh, the really expensive ones, some of the ones that Jason and I use and ones that are on our wish list. So that is coming. But my basically, my scopes are almost comparable to the price of my guns, like uh, my Browning, Browning Hells Canyon, which goes for about 1800 uh, the Leupold V... Uh, the Leupold uh, 5 HD is um, the same price, pretty much. Uh, my 22s, the scopes cost about the same as the 22s, my CZs and my Ruger Precision Rifle, maybe just a little bit cheaper. Uh, so uh, like on, I run a Vortex Razors on a couple of them on my big target rifles. So that's probably the biggest, uh, probably like $1,000 more than the actual rifle. That's the, probably the biggest leap there is. But I know people that run like Tangent Thea, $6,500 scopes on a custom Tika, a dirty old $1,500 Tika, a $6,000 scope. And though that was, um, yeah, that was uh, very interesting to see that. How about you, Jace? Uh, yeah, I mean, in regards to scopes? Yeah. Listen, I, I've been saying that before. Unless you're gonna, you know, unless you're gonna be, you know, stretching the legs, unless you're gonna be dialing, you know, any a lot of these scopes will do the jobs from these good brands. You know, three to nine by forty Plex Reticle, uh, you know, they'll do the job, mate. You know, like four hundred, five hundred bucks Bushnells or um, uh, you know, Zeiss in, you know, in, in, if you can pick up a Zeiss, even a second hand Zeiss or something like that, or you know. Uh, they do the job. It holds zero. You shoot 100 meters. What more do you want from a scope? You know, it just needs to be clear. And if you buy like a three to nine by 40, you know, it's it's one of the most made scopes probably anywhere in the world. So it's going to do the job. I, mean, I used to have years ago, like a Redfield. I think it was made by Leopold. It was my first scope. I mean, and I shot that many foxes with that thing. It was unbelievable. You don't need to go crazy. But I think when you need to step up uh, into dialing and stuff like that for long range solutions, then, yeah, I think you definitely need to, uh, you know, spend that money because, you know, again, the glass can be good, but if it doesn't track worth a shit, you know, it's not worth buying. So that's the most important thing. Definitely. There's a big difference, as we said before, from shooting 500 to 1,000 to 1.6 Ks. you got to be able to see your hits. And if you – my rule of thumb is at 1,000 metres – if I can't see the grass, blades of grass, pretty pretty clear, I don't want it all fuzzy and blurry, um, it's not good enough for me. So that's definitely for target shooting, and you're correct. For hunting, you don't have to spend a lot of money. The Zero Techs, the entry-level Zeiss Conquest, all those, Nico Sterling, all really good scopes that will get you into hunting. That's pretty much all you need. 
to get an, as you said, 300 metres is basically the maximum you shoot for hunting, the average yeah. hunter. Let me say one thing too. Again, that's a caveat a bit too. If you've got a heavy recoiling rifle, I'd say spend, you know, just a bit more, a bit more money just on that. You know, if it's a, you know, I'll get a reputable good brand, you know, in that, you know, five hundred dollar range or something, just to, just so, you know, nothing happens. I mean, scopes can happen anything, but you know, you're more likely to have more problems with cheaper scopes with heavy recoiling rifles, I think, than you will with, uh, you know, light recoiling rifles with cheaper scopes. So. Um, you know, chances are you may not too, but I'm just saying I think it's better to spend just that touch extra, get that good reputable brand and um, go from there. Yep, definitely, definitely. And uh, we will take one of the comments out of here because this guy is a Patreon, and that's from Colin, uh, looking at getting the Sour 100, but but Sig Sour has gone out of business. Unfortunately so, um, it is, is, unfortunately so is it worth getting. Well, the two, even though Sauer owned, uh, Sig Sauer owned Sauer, the Sauer rifles are not being touched. It's the handgun size, the handguns that they make in Germany. The American side, the Sig Sauer America, is just going tooth and nail. It's going really well. So that's not even, you're still going to better buy Sauer pistols, Sig Sauer pistols, but they're going to come from America. And I believe the reason they're going under is because they can't sell many handguns in Europe with their ridiculous laws, sort of like Australia, and it's costing too much to produce these quality handguns. And because they um, Sig Sauer supplies a lot of stuff to the US military, my understanding is the European military and law enforcement won't buy their, gu their handguns. So that's, uh, that's pretty much it. And the downturn of the dollar and everything, it's just not viable. But all that's going to be left of Sig Sauer Europe is a parts uh, distribution area, pretty much. So that's a bit of a shame. But the Sauer rifles, to my knowledge, are not going to be touched. They're still going strong. They started in, I think, 1780 Sauer. Uh, and, yeah, they were brought by Sig Sauer. Um, oh, when was it? In the early 2000s. That's like uh, extortion, isn't it? You know, I mean, you sell to the yeah. US, don't buy your handguns. I mean, you know, hopefully they can supply. I'd, I'd rather supply the American market anyway, way more, uh, oh, yeah. way more money uh, in it. I mean, we've seen, we were talking about this before the show, you know, people, uh, yeah. we've been, me and Aaron have been very strong on gun laws and stuff uh, uh, over the years, like for a long time, for you know, 10 years. And, you know, we're finally seeing the benefits of the Second Amendment in America when you've got, you've, you've probably been on uh, YouTube, you've been on Facebook, you've seen all the looters trying to you know, rob businesses and the owners are fighting back, mate, putting shots into the air and, you know, shots into the roof of their buildings just to, and all of a sudden, poof, they're out of there, mate. They're, those looters, yeah. mate, they're not hanging around. I've seen about 10 videos so far. And, mate, as soon as someone pulls a gun, mate, and starts shooting, all of a sudden, oh, shit, they get, they're gone. So Second Amendment in full glory, folks. Second Amendment in full glory. Yeah, as I said in a comment, if uh, those riots happened here in Australia, it would be a different story. There'd be a lot of innocent victims dead uh, because no, no self-defence laws. You know, you can't have a gun to defend your property or yourself or your business. So there would be a totally different story if that happened. Over here, that's for sure. So, yeah, imagine how hard it is. You know, people are you know struggling with COVID nineteen. Um, in Australia, we had the bushfires as well. For an example, a lot of people are struggling. But say in America, they've had COVID and people have raised businesses. They employ people, and then thousands. You know, people just running around destroying everything you've ever built. Just grubby fucking deadbeats, mate. If you ask me. As I said last week, I got a friend in Texas, and uh, that the riots are four miles from her house. She owns, I think, 900 acres, and they're putting up signs saying, you better support Black Lives Matters or we're coming into your home. Her her husband and her young daughter are sitting there with fully loaded AR-15s um, ready to go. They said, as soon as they come onto our property, we're going to start mowing them down. They're not here to, they're not here to uh, be nice to us. They're here to, to hurt us and take our stuff, so we have to defend ourselves. Her, her young daughter and son. They both have their own AR-15s and they're all prepared to fight tooth and nail to um, not become a victim. And that's just amazing freedoms they have over there. But unfortunately, I asked her, are they arresting anyone? And they're not arresting people over there. It's just all happening. She said it's absolutely crazy and unbelievable. So you're not hearing of these uh, Antifa guys and that being arrested. 
They seem to be running amok. I wonder if I do think they're going to start rounding them up afterwards, though. I think from all the video footage. I think we need to talk about the topic of today, dude. Let's get some exciting yes. stuff. Yes, yes. The um, yeah, the big price jumps of all the guns and rifles. And we we're wondering what you guys would pay for a rifle. So it's uh, yeah, they've definitely gone up, haven't they? When I was doing the research for the top five guns under a thousand dollars i couldn't believe how much some of these have gone up some have gone up horrendously and some have gone up um just like comparable to the dollar that's like a couple of hundred bucks but some of them boy i can't believe like five six hundred bucks price rise and now that our dollar is starting to get a bit stronger in the next load of orders are those prices going to come down i'm wondering yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? The prices. Um, obviously, some companies have really, really gone to the to the higher end of you know twenty to twenty five yeah. percent of uh, putting their prices up. Obviously, some have just tried to put it up, you know, m you know, modestly. But you know, there's a lot of issues to deal with. One, we've got COVID nineteen, or we had it, or we still got it, and I guess we're coming out a little bit of it now. And then we had the drop in the Australian dollar. But uh, you know, now the Australian dollar has, has struck back a little bit strong. You know, are we going to see those decreases again um, in in stock again coming into the country? I don't think we will, but, you know, no, no. Uh, the I guess the question to listeners and, and start, you know, letting us know your comments in some of the descriptions as well. I mean, has this, has the COVID affected your ability to make money in your job? And based on the prices going up, are you still willing to buy at the current prices? I mean, the prices may never come down and this could be the new benchmark standard. But, you know, people have lost their jobs. Um, you know, prices have gone up. I just think it's probably the most inopportune time for this to sort of happen. But, you know, I guess the companies have got to make money. Um, but, you know, that's sort of put me off a little bit. I'm happy with where I'm at with what I've got at the moment. But, yeah, if I was in the market to buy something, either would have tried to get it before the price increase or, yeah, probably even for me, I'm on a pretty good income in my job and that's actually put me off from purchasing more firearms and and, 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 and re related equipment at the moment. Scopes have, you know, gone up three, 400 bucks on the ones I was looking at from, you know, for 14, 1500 to 1850. I mean, I, I just can't, I can't absorb the extra costs. So I'd like to know what people, you know, in the description, how much would you spend on a gun? Would you... You know, are you spending fifteen hundred? Are you spending two thousand? Are you are you entry level gun pricing? You know, where are you at on that spectrum? I'd like to find out from people uh, in the comments. So let us know. I find uh, when I'm talking to gun shops, the average sort of price that people are willing to spend is about a thousand to one and a half thousand, maybe two thousand ish for something special or something a bit different, like the Ruger Precision Rifle. Uh, that seems to be the price point, around a thousand to one and a half thousand dollars, and that's a lot of money to a, to a lot of people. And plus, you've got to get a scope on top of that and ammo or reloading gear. Uh, mm. Definitely, uh, you just look at the prices overseas, and I know America's got it really good, but man, so our thousand dollar rifles, some of the uh, entry level rifles for around a thousand bucks here, are three hundred dollars over there. You can't mm. tell me it's seven hundred bucks uh, to get it to get the rifles over here. I just, shops. I just fear that you know is it going to affect the import? Is it going to affect? Because you know you don't forget you also too you've got the the maker of the firearm or part or scope got to make money. Then the importer's got to make money. Then the gun shop's got to make money, and then we get it. I mean that's going through what one, two, three sets of hands for people to make money on. So that's 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 a bit of a struggle, in it. and I think you know I think a lot, man. We've got a lot more people getting into the sport, but it's really started. I know I know one guy in particular. He's got a family. He just can't not afford to shoot. He cannot afford to buy a gun, even a cheaper gun and a cheaper scope. He's he's uh, struggling, and um, you know he's you know he's got other priorities, children, and yeah, he just can't afford something decent. And um, it's a real shame, man, that you know people are getting priced out of the market from being able to get into this wonderful sport. Um, because things are just getting way, way too expensive. And, um, yeah, it's, it's a real shame. Yeah, i got a mate like that. And um, the rifle we end up getting, he got his licence and he's always wanted to get into shooting. He used to shoot when he was a kid. And all he could afford was a $200 rifle, a nice old rifle. It actually, is quite nice and very good condition. And he got, as a twenty two two fifty. he got, got at the right price secondhand. Uh, but now he's saving up. He's been saving up for several months for a scope. 
So and he's just waiting to be able to have the extra income to buy a scope now. So yeah. it's turning into a bit of a lo long process for him. But, yes, it is definitely uh, getting a bit pricey for some of the gear. A couple of companies that I know have done the right thing. They've only just put up a little bit. But other companies, I've heard 25% of their prices have jumped. That's unbelievable. The guns that were uh, about four grand are now six and a half grand. That's just unbelievable. Yeah, so I it's different. You know, me, me and you were on pretty pretty decent. Well, you know, before the COVID, you were on pretty decent money when you were getting work and stuff when you were doing okay. Yeah. I mean, I can't afford a six and a half thousand dollar rifle, man. I just I couldn't justify it. You know, like is it going to shoot better than something I can? I mean, I can do. You know, like there's there's, there's pros and cons. If you really want it, you got the money. I say have at it. But I mean, you can also do a custom build. You know, with a custom action. You know, and probably pay yeah. less money. So. You know, it's tossing it up, six one, half dozen the other. How much money you got? How much money do you want to spend? I mean, I, I bought, like, just a, my basic sort of, when I just start to shoot longer range, there are any basic rifles, decent scopes, add in projectiles, powder, dyes, um, a stock, mate, you're up to five grand. I mean, people think it's madness to spend five. I talked to mates that aren't into shooting, my good mates from school that I still talk to. They think it's mad to spend five grand on a gun. They reckon just are madder than a cut snake, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, you do have all the extras that you got to get um, to go with it, so it does add up pretty fast. But, yeah, yeah it's definitely a bit of a shame. And also what coming up is um, a big ammo shortage. So I highly recommend, guys, get in and start buying your ammo because from what I'm hearing from one major importer, uh, they got one more shipment coming in in August, and after August, they got nothing else they can get because they're all servicing America. After all this COVID and riots and the panic buying over there, they've had the largest gun buying uh, few last three months in history, in the history of the US. One month, well, I think March was 3.2 million guns sold in the US. Uh, it's just unbelievable. And they've said, that we're not bringing anything else in, rest of the year there's nothing available for us to buy so definitely i'd be getting in and buying what you want for the christmas break because there could be a very big chance from what i'm hearing uh a lot of ammo is going to be shortage or once again might go up in price because uh price and the demand for it all so it's definitely something to uh think about that's for sure uh, well, uh, we should hit some questions dude yeah that's what i was gonna say some of these uh, live comments. Okay, we'll start at the top. Happy Hunter. Well, I, I can just already tell we're not going to – we've got an hour to go. <laughs> we're not going <laughs> to get anywhere near these, dude, but go on. Let's just start. I'm looking to upgrade my SIG P320 to an STI DVC Classic. Is it worth dropping five grand um, of my hard-earned dollars? Uh, personally, I think the uh, SIG P320, I own one, and it's one of – my best handguns I own. I personally, and I've shot a lot of handguns, and I've shot the STIs, very nice guns, but no, I would not spend five grand on a handgun whatsoever, and I wouldn't uh, be getting rid of my P320 for a $5,000 handgun. Uh, it's a very, very accurate handgun, so I definitely uh, would, uh, w yeah, I'd recommend not to do it. That's just me. Uh, I don't have a I don't have a pig uh, pig a sig I should say. <laughs> it, <laughs> Wash your mouth like, out. If I get a farm one day, I might have a pig. But um, uh, yeah, I don't have. I've still got my handgun license, but I don't have any at the moment. So maybe I should look at getting uh, another handgun, possibly. But uh, five thousand, oh man, I couldn't justify it. Fifteen hundred, yeah, you know. But again, it comes back to that adage of. You know, maybe have better quality, but a, li a bit less guns. You know, that's my motto these days. Put good scopes, good rifles, good school, decent rifles, good scopes, and, yeah, look to the future. Yeah. Uh, Johnny, uh, you pay what you for what you get, I suppose. $2,000 and under is my budget. Mm. Yeah, two grand, I think, would pretty much be the maximum for most people, I dare say. Mm. That is a decent chunk of money, especially when you, if you've got a family. That's for yeah. sure. Well, you, you uh, deal with Gary, you know what I mean, from Brown's Plains. And, I mean, I, uh, this happened the other day. I was looking at getting a bike, and it comes back to that adage of how much do people want to spend. And I said, do you normally sell more expensive or cheaper? And he goes, mate, no one wants to spend more than 400 bucks. I want the best bike possible, but they don't want to spend 400 bucks. That's the most that we sell. 
So again, ho- you know, over two grand, I don't think would probably be maybe twenty five percent of. I don't know exactly. I'm just guessing, right? But you know, your seventy, probably seventy to eighty percent of your sales are going to be well under two grand. Definitely, definitely, I reckon it could yeah. be more. You know, yeah, well, Browns Plains uh, was saying about about a thousand dollar mark is what most people are prepared to spend, and then probably about five hundred bucks on a scope is the average sort of price down there. So, which does make sense. Unfortunately, yeah, so you really now getting into entry level. I reckon about the, oh, I reckon about thirteen hundred bucks to start off with. You get don't yourself a, get a nice sour. I was going to say, don't forget too. You know, you can pick up on some of these, you, you know, web websites like you know Osgarden Sales, etc., or whatever. You can pick up. You know, some some good secondhand scopes as well that haven't had much use. And you know, if you make the wrong decision on a scope, chances are it's going to be hard to get your money back. You're probably going to lose fifty percent of your money. Um, you know, or, or you know, 40, 40, 30, 40 percent of your money trying to get that money back. So yeah, maybe look at secondhand as well if it's in good condition. If they've got the guaranteed lifetime warranty, if there's something wrong with it, you know, your vortex, your night force, maybe some zeises and that, you can easily get them replaced. If there's something wrong with it. So. Yeah, definitely it's worth looking into the second-hand market as well. You can can get some really good deals. So here we go. Grant, uh, as a new shooting family, we just purchased a Lithgo LA-101. That's a 22 and a Tika T, uh, T1X. $2,000 for two guns and enjoying plinking, rabbiting, um, and rabbiting is, is worth it. Well, definitely, that's good. Two grand, you've got yourself two guns for the whole family. That's yeah. definitely a good deal. And 22, you know, like cheap, economical, you know, buy 5,000 rounds, mate. You've got a place to shoot it. You can do some, you know, uh, rabbit hunting. You can do some little, you know, long-range shooting testing with a 22, stretch it out. You know, it's the cheapest way to do it. Yeah, definitely. Oh, man, the 243 people are out in force today. Oh, loving it. I've, uh, I've got 243 galore here. It's the worst caliber ever. Just kidding. I've got <laughs> one. I do like 243. Yeah, I don't have one because I've got a 223 and a uh, 308, which is, yeah, covers both ends of it, really. So, uh, okay, Rob. Hi, fellas. Uh, I have a limit of $2,500. Okay, moving up. And my two dream guns to own is a Colt Python, very nice gun. They're actually coming out again, brand, the, uh, remaking them. And the MG42, Hitler's buzzsaw. Well, I think you'd be pretty much shit out of luck for the second one there in Australia. Uh, but the Colt I'll Python. MG42. I'll have a look at it. MG. Yeah, the classic uh, World War II German machine gun mounted on a lot of tanks. Awesome guns. So, yeah, yes, right. the, the you Colt Python. You can't have that one here unless you're on a. <laughs> it's a fully, fully auto. It looks like. So, yeah, it's yeah, it's, yeah. Fully <laughs> auto. Have, yeah. Yeah, so you won't be getting that one. But the Colt Python, awesome. I've shot two original Colt Pythons and I owned um, a long barrel and a shorter barrel one, and they are unbelievable guns. Super accurate in 357 Magnum. Uh, there we go. Uh, Happy Hunter again. Uh, the Colt will set you back about two grand. Smith & Wesson all the way, I reckon. Yeah, they are good guns, Smith & Wesson. I do have a... Ruger GP100 and 357, and that is an absolute laser beam. It really is. So that's sort of the uh, comparison sort of gun to it. But, yeah, they are very good. Gee, a few people have um, uh, a few uh, Colt Pythons here. Okay, Rob, um, long arm centerfire, two and a half grand, straight pull shotgun, Eight hundred and fifty dollars from fire plinker, four hundred dollars reloading gear, one and a half thousand. How much propellant can I have in New South Wales? Well, that one is for you, Jason. Come on, that go again. Uh, how much propellant can he have in New South Wales? I don't know. I don't know if there's a limit. I don't know if there's a limit. There might be. I'll check it, come back next week, and I'll, I'll have an answer for you because that's a very good question. Um, yeah. I'm not sure there is a limit, but there could be. But I'll find out for you. Come back next week. In Queensland, I am 10 kg is sounding about right to me, I think, here. We do have a limit here. 
but you can dump all that into your project goals and you can have five tons worth of ammunition, but you can't have any more than like 10 kg of actual powder by itself. So it is a bit crazy, more backwards laws, of course. Uh, and on the ammunition, I do get asked sometimes, what do I do with old ammunition that I don't want? Um, or um, is reloaded wrong, I'm not going to shoot it. What do I do with it? Can't throw it in the rubbish bin, which I wouldn't recommend just dumping in the rubbish bin. Well, you can take it to your gun shop, but they have to get the mining industry in. But a trick that I do like to use and is you take it all and you just dump it on the front desk of your local police station because they have to sort it out themselves and you and you just walk off and they cannot refuse it. they got to dispose of it themselves, and they absolutely hate it. So you get all your old ammunition, go down to the cop shop, say, can you please dispose of this for me? I'm a licensed shooter. Here's my license. Uh, I don't want to throw this out, but um, you just have to go and dump it. I know a few guys that do that um, who do a lot of reloading, and that's what they do, and the cops don't like it because they have to work for their money finally. That's uh, um, it's always a good trick. Uh, okay, Jay, uh, our joinery. Uh, you can't put a price on happiness. Save up and get the best thing that you, you uh, that you can. You don't want to regret your buy. Well, that's very true. Uh, definitely, you want to be happy with what you get. I know people who buy guns and they do it because they don't go out shooting much. And when they do go out shooting, right. they want to shoot something special. Mm. So what do you think of that, Jason? Yeah, I mean, you know, I just want to buy more guns, but then I think, you know, should do I need any more? And then, you know, I'm, I don't like the word need, but, you know, I've got to, sometimes I don't get to shoot the ones that I've got. <laughs> so, you know, I've got to start shooting the ones that I've got. So, but, you know, yeah, I mean, you know, have uh, I think have a, a spectrum of guns. You know, you've got your low cows, you've got your medium, and then your heavy. And then, you know, you some, a hunting rifle or two or, you know, if you want all hunting rifles, some people just like heavy barrels, some like sporter barrels. I mean, one of the guys on the trip that I just went on, I mean, he was carrying some big heavy hower in, in a stock muzzle break. I thought, shit, how are you carrying that bloody thing around? So, so. So yeah. what? Uh, also about your hunting trip, what? Mm. So you told me what they said around the campfire about gear and pricing. What? Are, so that's actually what sparked this conversation up. Yeah. What? Uh, so what was said? Yeah, people were just like, well, you know, some people are losing their jobs. They can't really afford the more expensive stuff. But yeah, when we were talking about, you know, like fifteen hundred dollar and two thousand know, dollar scopes, I know one of the guys there. He's got. Um, uh, you know, he had the, that was the one carrying that Hauer and the, the 308, I think it was. He had a good night four scope on there. But most of the guys, man, were running the cheaper stuff. Like, not cheaper, but just, you know, they're running Hauer's or running, you know, four or $500 scopes. You just your entry level Bushnells or, you know, you just your entry level scopes and stuff like that. So a lot of people, when, you, when I looked at their gear, it's not that it's bad. It's just that that's where people are at, not just right now, but just in general in regards to their sports. You know, they've got families, you know. Like, I don't have I don't have any kids. I don't have a wife. So I can spend my money whichever way I choose, you know. Um, a lot of people don't have that luxury. They've got kids. They've got mortgages. They've got commitments, you know. Um, maybe they're not on the best money with their jobs and stuff like that. Or, you know, the wife's at home while they've got to work and pay a mortgage. They can't afford expensive stuff. So um, that's how yeah. we we basically got into talking about, you know, the price hikes and stuff like that. And yeah, most of them with the opinion that they're not, yeah, they're waiting to see everything settle down before they even think about another purchase of a scope or rifle. Yeah. And they were a bit shocked about two and a half thousand dollars scopes and that, weren't they? Oh yeah, absolutely. They were like, they couldn't believe it when I said I spent like two and up two thousand. I got a bit cheaper than that now, but they've gone up two and a half thousand dollar delta. They just thought that was absolutely insane. Like how can you spend two and a half thousand dollars on a scope? I said, <laughs> maybe, maybe it's a good question you know that's <laughs> maybe they're right you know <laughs> yeah but you brought that scope for a purpose so um yeah. that's the thing so um jal again uh someday gun blazer side by side double and 500 nitro engraved crazy timber probably twenty five thousand dollars upwards well that would be very very nice I actually shot, uh, Jason got out to shoot for the first time for a while um, last weekend. Um, a mate of me went out and we he brought a $12,000 shotgun under and over, a blazer, 
F3. And uh, I tell you what, this thing was amazing. Didn't make my clay shooting any better. I still was unable to hit anything, but I just absolutely suck at clay shooting. I think I need a few lessons. But this thing was unbelievable. You could adjust everything, it's what, every what single way you can imagine. And I didn't really get people spending big bucks on shotguns where you can buy a $500 under and over. Uh, but when I held this, it just felt so nice. Just the weight, you're a clay shooter. Um, as um, so you know more about it than me, but it just felt perfect. The weight, the feel of it, just everything felt so right on it. Uh, but would I spend twelve thousand dollars on a sh under and over shotgun? Probably not. I'd spend if I had that money, I'd be spending it on a long range gun. But everybody's different. But I can tell you now, I filmed a review on it, so we will be editing that up, and that'll be coming out very soon. But the the thing was just amazing, eh? Uh, so that you'd probably get more appreciation out, of, appreciation out of it than me because you do shoot clays. Yeah, there's, you know, like you, you definitely notice when there's, you know, like a quality of shotguns. It's not like, you know, a, a $1,000 rifle you're getting pretty decent quality, you know. Like, okay, some of the other ones, the cheaper ones, I'm not going to mention brands, but it's like holding a plank of wood. They're just, yeah, they're rough. They're just, you know, they're just not that great, you know. But you pick up something like a, you know, Miraku MK70, which is probably the minimum I would pick up. I mean, that'll last you the rest of your life if you look after it, man. Um, good wood, decent wood. Um, you know, mechanically good, no problem. I've had shit shotguns, man. I've returned every single one of them for end up getting a refund. Um, you know, one of them was a side by side. The fit and finish was fantastic, man. But at the end of the day, man, mechanically it was dog shit. So I had to return it, and thankfully, you know, I was able to you know talk to the talk to the company and, and the importer and say, listen, you know, that's you know, I basically want my money back. Otherwise, it's sort of you know going to be a little bit of trouble with it. So um, yeah, they they respected that and. You know, I got my money back and then I just, yeah, again, I should have bought, but I wanted a side-by-side. -side. There's not many configurations in side-by-side -side that are either at a reasonable price point. I mean, there's a Fab Arm Classis, which is, you know, I think last time I checked, they were four grand. You know, like that's expensive for a side-by-side -side to take onto a duck field. So, um, you know, I, th I bought one of these $1,100 ones and, oh, man, never again, dude, never again. I'm going to buy a cheap shotgun, man. You know, Miracu MK70, MK10, you know, obviously you've got some uh, your silver pigeons and that sort of price range as well. Um, you know, you've got your, your Frankies. You've got there's a lot of you know a lot of good guns out there, man. But you know, like I said, always bang for the buck. I've had two MK70s in my time, Miraku. So made in Japan. Can't complain. A lot when you get into that higher tier of shotgun too. A lot of it, yeah, it's fit and feel. But you know, there's only so much good steel and bluing you can have, man. A lot of that money's in the wood, you know. And, uh, do I want to pay, you know, 12 grand for wood? No, thanks. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but, um, yeah, the thing was amazing. Um, I'm sure he'll bring it out when you come up next and you can uh, show us how it's meant to be used. I've got to tell you what, I am the world's worst clay shooter. I really am. I did not do it justice, I don't think. At Christmas, I mean, he, he couldn't hit the broad side of a barn whilst I had the Ross nah. circuit shooting you know little uh what was it 20 gauge or uh, tw no, 20 14. 14 14 i was just whacking clays like you wouldn't oh, believe yeah. the circuit judge <laughs> and i couldn't hit anything i'm first on that <laughs> i am not a good clay shooter give me uh, a gun i'll um snipe things at a at a thousand meters for you not a problem but uh yeah when it comes to clay shooting i am atrocious so i uh, just picked up my new berica today this is from Tony Smith after 12 month wait. Uh, was it worth it? Damn right it was. Yeah, awesome guns. And I was actually talking to the importer today. They actually have um, a few a few new models coming in. They're going to have a more of a budget model coming in. And the Berica, the big technical black ops one with the uh, magazine fed, that's coming in a nice little short barrel, a 16-inch barrel. So that's going to be coming in soon. So if you want one of those, get down to your gun store and order them because there's only going to be a limit on how many they bring in the short barrel ones. They look absolutely awesome. But, yeah, I do like the barricades for a bit of fun. Uh, shame you can't have them down in New South Wales, Jason. Yeah, I know. The Berica, the old uh, Black Ops. What a name for a shotgun. Um, yeah. you know, using it for clays but and i always come back to it and we've made heaps of videos like you know be a good little pig gun mate chuck it on the back of the quad chuck it on the back of the 
on the truck, you know, be, be perfect for that. Just, you know, chase pigs around. Yeah, they got one coming out called the Urban Combat, I think. And I, oh. <laughs> yeah, I don't <laughs> think the Border Force are going to like that name or the police. But, yeah, the uh, Urban Combat is coming out. That's going to be another one. So they've got a few new ones coming out. And people have been seeing this uh, this one video, or not video, a, a picture coming out of like a big tactical mag-fed double-barrel gun. Well, they're going to be about 2,600, but it's only a prototype. And other companies bringing that in. But apparently it's just a prototype, I've been told right now. But that's going to be pretty pricey. But it's pretty big and cumbersome to me. I don't think it's going to be very practical. Uh, okay, so here's one for you, Jason. Tika T3X, 223, 243, and 306. Value for money all around 1200 to $1,500. Yeah, I remember when they were, yeah, it was a couple of years ago now, the old um, ticker T3 Lite uh, in the blue synthetic, they were like eight ninety five. That was a pretty good deal back then. Um, but, yeah, like I said before, like, you know, you guys know that I liked them, no problem with that. Um, yeah, the quality I think is good. Aaron might disagree. We always have discussions about this. But, yeah, I just think, you know, if they would just drop their prices by a couple of hundred bucks, I think they'd be a lot more competitive uh, in the market. Sure, they're popular. They, you know, Beretta can charge whatever they want for, you know, tickers. But, again, there's some really good guns coming on the market, man, um, you know, under that, you know, 1,000 to 1,200 range. So, um, you know, there's going to be some competition. You know, will Beretta continue to, to charge those prices for those guns? If people are buying them, well, then I guess they can. But, um, you know, me, that's probably going to – eventually they're going to price me out of the market from buying them in the future. So um, that's something I think they need to to, to, to to look at, you know. I mean, if they're selling them and they don't, you know, they don't need my sale, well, you know, so be it too. I mean, yeah, there's plenty of guns out there I can choose from. You know, I had the 300 Wim Mag and sold it within about four weeks and bought the Bagara B14 HMR. So, hmm. Yeah, well, I think uh, Tika probably owe you a huge commission check for all the guns you've sold through your show over the years, talking about them. That's still for waiting, sure. Man, still waiting for the check of the commission check, but every time I check my mailbox, it's never there. So Yeah, yeah sent to the wrong address, I think. Uh, yes, the, I just think the Tika's, the worst thing about them is the price. I do think compared to the other European brands that are coming to the market, they are a bit pricey. They're just riding on that name. And that only will only get you so far, I think. And people, especially now, are looking for another option. And the other option is Sour and Malza. They are just as good as any Tika. And they're about 500 bucks cheaper for what for something equivalent. Uh, that's for sure. Uh, okay. Here's one. Uh, oh, Joinery again. JAL Joinery. What do you think about the Aussie... Uh, straight pull rifles that go from four thousand to ten thousand uh, dollars. Any good or a gimmick? I I think I prefer a Christensen Arms MPR bolt for the money. Yes, well we have talked about this before, and me I think they are a bit of a gimmick. I do think they're very expensive. Some of them for what they are, and they are very limited in the use uh, for what they are. I know, yeah. There's a there's a real premium one being built on the Gold Coast, and they go for about they start at nine thousand dollars, I believe, and the six point five Creedmoor is over ten thousand dollars. Okay, they do have a good Allen Swan barrel on them, but Jesus, it's just too much. You're getting into the arena of uh, yeah, your high end name brand rifles. What do you reckon on these guns, Chase? Mm, especially four grand, four grand to ten grand. Yeah, it's expensive, isn't it? You know, it's expensive. I mean, you know, like I, I just, you know, I want to see improvement over the next, say, five to ten years before I'd ever consider a sale. Sure, I want to, you know, support Australian businesses, but, you know, not at the cost of four four $4,000 or $10,000, man. And, you know, if people have got the money and you want to buy one, go right ahead. You know, it's perfect for you. It's just going to work for you brilliantly. But, you know, again, you know, I can build – something off an, a decent action and a good barrel for either the same price and have proven company products that have been out in the market for you know, decades. Um, you know, why would I take a gamble on something that's because it's made in Australia? Sorry, I just, I just don't buy that, man. And that may upset some people, but, you know, it is what it is. And if I ask how many people that were listening right now have bought one of these $4,000 to $10,000 shotguns or rifles, 
um, or whatever that price thing they are. I mean, how many of you guys actually own one? I'm not many. I don't know anyone that owns some of these guns. So, you know, again, how many are they selling? I've got no idea. I don't really follow, you know, that particular style of rifle because it just doesn't really interest me. I do have the um, Dickinson 12-gauge shotgun straight pull, which has been working for me so far, no problems. I've only used it on one trip. I put a, probably put about 250 rounds through it and never had an issue. So, um, you know, four grand to buy Australian. Yeah, I mean, let us know in the comments. Have you got one? Let us know. I've only seen um, of yeah, the Australian made. I've seen the one, one of them that's made in New South Wales, and I didn't think it was worth the money at all. It was a two thousand dollar rifle. It, it was not worth um, four thousand bucks at all. Um, but there's a niche market. What are you going to use it for? They're pretty heavy to lug around hunting. So they're not they're not a hunting rifle. And if you're going to use the is it a long-range shooting rifle? I mean, is a straight pull a long-range shooter? It depends on the barrel, I guess, on it. But, I mean, is it really a, you know, where's the niche? Where is it hunting? Is it, a tar is it a target? It really doesn't, you know, have a specific place, does it? Yeah, well, if I'm spending, say, four grand to ten grand on a rifle, I'd be buying a Desert Tech uh, long-range rifle. I'd be buying, oh, the Christensen Arms. I've used them. They're awesome rifles. Uh, something along those lines, something that has been battle-worn and proven and you know are good quality long-distance rifles, not a, a gimmicky straight pull because they half these prices are because, oh, they look like an AR-15. And if you want something like that, buy yourself a $2,000 Ruger Precision Rifle and come back to me with these things uh, when you can do a 100 mil group at a 1,000 metres like what my Ruger Precision 308 20-inch barrel has done. And I think I paid uh, yeah 2200 for it a mm. few years ago. And I've put hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of rounds through it. So if you want something that looks technical, get a Ruger Precision. Uh, that looks technical. And when you can get groups that big um, at, at those sort of distances, and I didn't need to spend that sort of money on it. That's for sure. It's just, um, yeah, I just don't see the value on those guns myself. Okay, one for you, Jace. I just paid twelve sixty for a Lithgow twenty two and nine hundred for a Ruger Precision Rimfire for the young bloke. Both our first rifles, PDA due within a few days. Yeah, man, two good rifles. You know, um, I think the Lithgow probably probably a, bit, a little bit better quality than the old Ruger Precision Rimfire just on price point. Um, but yeah, man, a lot of guys having really good success with the um, Australian made Lithgows, man. You can't complain with those. I haven't picked one up myself yet because I'm not in the market for any more 22s. I've already got a, a CZ and, and another one, so I don't really need one. But yeah, man, you're going to have a great time with those. Just, you know, pow, pow, smashing a few rabbits and, you know, let us know how you go in, in future live streams. Yeah, now the, I've got a Lithgow um, 22 and love it. It's absolutely awesome gun it's one of the first ones i got it second hand and it's one of the first ones uh models to come out and it had a bit of work it's got a lighter trigger in it but yeah i love it very very accurate nice light and compact i really do like the uh the lithgo okay hardcore unit 6k on a barrett 338 lapua jeez i don't think they're 6k anymore <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah. a bit more than that, but uh, yeah. Hey, hey, where where's he getting him from? If you're getting him for six k, <laughs> send us an email where you're getting him. All right, so don't send the email, don't send it to anyone else. Just privately email it to us. Exactly, and we'll we'll on sell them and make a minimal amount of profit. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Now that's uh, yeah, Barrett. Um, I've never act, I've held them, but I've never shot a Barrett. One of the only rifles I've never shot, never shot a Barrett, and funnily enough, never shot a Winchester Set Model 70. They're probably mm. the only two I haven't shot over all the years. Mm. Next one. All right, what do we got? So question, uh, Chris wants a deer rifle in Victoria. 6.5 is illegal, but want another Lithgow for the set. My only option is 308, but if they make 300 wind mag, I'd rather that. You, I think you can use 6.5 uh, on fallow. Um, their minimum is 243. Uh, if you're shooting reds and, uh, you know, whether you've got reds down there, but sambar, 
uh, and associ other associated deer, you need minimum, uh, you know, 270. So, you know, you got your 270s. What do you got? You got your uh, 7 mil Magnum, 7 mil 08. You've got your 308. You've got your 300 Win Mag, 3006. Um, all these new fan dangled calibers, 300 PRC, 28 Nosler. Um, you know, there's a bunch of different rifles you can choose, man, um, from that particular, you know, category. I think it's all going to come down to if, like, and I say this all the time, if you're reloading, stick to the basic well known calibers that if you need to go to a shop and pick up ammo, it's going to be available there for you. No problem. You know, I see guys with these inconspicuous calibers, you know, um, not reloading and then going, oh, shit, it's $80 a box of ammunition. Well, you know, you should have probably <laughs> known that, you know, stick to your basics, your 308s, your, even three out of wind mag, you know, but again, the higher you go up, the more expensive it gets. So just, just remember that, you know, like I was surprised three out of wind mag. I mean, I've got 80 grains of powder. I can probably, I'm not sure how many loads I got out of a 500 gram or one kilo tin, but it wasn't a lot. I can tell you at 80 grains. So just something to think about. Yeah, definitely. Uh, well, my go-to hunting is a 306 round. I think that can knock down the majority of stuff. It's an all round, good round running a compressed load, uh, so it's very flat, 150 grain projectile, uh, 3,000 feet a second. Uh, so basically I just have to point to that what it's going to hit up to 300 metres and it's just going to go there. You, you mainly hunt with a 243, don't you? Yeah, I mean, depends. I've got the I've got the 243, <coughs> excuse me, for long range, well, long range varmints, you know, up to 300 metres, say 400 at best. You know, I have been shooting up to 500, but, you know, on rabbits it gets difficult. I've got the 260 for long-range shooting, but I'd hunt with that because I'm using the ELDX. But if I had my way again, I'd go 140 grain ELDM. Um, and then, yeah, I've got the 300 wind mag for, with a 208 grain ELDM as well for hunting. And like I said, a lot of people are going to these ELDM match bullets for, for hunting. They're cheaper than the ELDX. Uh, there's a lot of guys on YouTube that um, use those bullets, especially a lot of guys from New Zealand. Um, they've got good BC, they've got good takedown power. Um, I think they're a copy of the old AMAX, the discontinued AMAX. So uh, a lot of guys were shooting the AMAX on rabbits, deer, whacking them hard. So, um, yeah, I mean, I've got the 7 mag for hunting, just my just sporter barrel. But like I said, when you go to sporter barrels, man, it just, you know, recoil becomes a bit of a problem, keeping it steady, on the, even on the bench. You know, when you're trying to do load testing without a muzzle brake, like the thing just moves like a bitch. So... Just remember that, man. You know, a lot of people want to get away with a kill with the lowest possible caliber. And you know what? That, that kind of makes sense a little bit, you know? So, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Okay. Uh, good to see a lot of guys here saying, you know, from Clark, good. To, a bit of a, I'll do a special mention. Clark, he said, good to see you back. And Sam, love the vid guys. Keep it up. And DP Skipper, welcome back, Jason. Well, you know, thank you. Good, sir. Yes. Thank you. Yes. It's amazing. A lot of, Really good comments here, uh, saying you like the show. It's been, yeah, it is. We just love doing this, talking to you guys and uh, hearing your comments. This is all about you guys. We want to hear what you have to say. So, here's Dave looking at a sour. Uh, just can't make my mind up. Two to three or two seventy. Um, I shoot two to three, and I love it. All depends on what he's doing, eh? If he's if he's purposely going after deer. Yeah, you know, I'd probably go the 270, but if it's your first rifle, man, 223, um, you know, again, are you reloading? Like I think, you know, I like my 243, but I'd also, man, I think I'd love to get either a 204, but not so much more, but probably 22, 250. I'd love to just get a super 20, uh, 22 cal, you know, before, because again, you step up the 243, you know, it's getting, it's, again, you're getting more powder, you're getting more expensive um, bullets, you know, stuff like that, whereas you stick to 22 cal, you know, you basically can get, you know, a, like five, five, a box of 500 projectiles. Again, you're paying a lot less. So, again, how much are you shooting? How much do you want to pay? You know, cost, it's way it up, you know. So, you know, like I said, I'll, I'll probably always have a 243, but I think you never know. Maybe the 243, I might get it um, rebarreled to 250 when I finally need a new barrel. But, you know, I might not too. And I do love the 87 grain VMAX for that, you know, good BC for the 243, and they're pretty cheap too, the 87 grain VMAX, so check those out. Yeah, well, I run the Sour uh, 100 and 223, and it's a laser beam. It is so accurate. Uh, so that's one I can actually recommend because I actually own it. Uh, 
dropped a Zeiss V4 on top, which was a fantastic hunting scope as well. So, what what, uh, what bullet are you using? Um, I was I wasn't reloading. I've got thousands of uh, reloads. I was running the tap ammo, sixty grain tap Hornady, but they don't bring it in anymore. So I'm actually on the hunt for a new one. I've got hundreds of. Uh, of ones I made up years ago, they're not very accurate. I think it was one of the first things I actually ever reloaded was these two two threes. And I made about a thousand of these. So they're not exactly accurate. They're probably okay for they're okay for plinking and shooting at something big that's close to you. But apart from that, I wouldn't say it's uh, my rounds I made were very good. So I, I was shooting the tap. I'm just going to be looking for a new cost effective uh, good round. I normally seem to go towards Hornady because I've always had good luck with Hornady projectiles and Hornady uh, factory. I just thought the price of it, it's just easier for me to and cheaper to buy factory 2 to 3. So it's still not very expensive at all. Time to go to the 50 grain VMAX in a reload, man. Good speed, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. I hit them hard, 50 grain VMAX. Yeah, I'm running the 55 Z Maxes in my loads, but once again, they they weren't good loads. That is not really good loads. Oh, Next yeah. one. Hi boys, thinking of purchasing the new Sarko S twenty three hundred Wim Mag for Target. What's a good quality scope and spec? I mean, the Sarko S twenty. I'm not sure. While we're talking, Aaron, I'm going to have a look at that. The Sarko S twenty. I, I think it's. I think it's the new model that's coming out or is out. Yeah, I, I know. Believe. I know. He'd actually bought one in the seven mil rare mag, but he's still waiting on uh, for it to come into the country. But I'm just looking at it. Is it a heavy barrel or is it not? It looks like a, it looks like a sporter hunting barrel. Um, so in that case, yeah, it's gonna you know recoil. Oh no, hang on. Yeah, no, it's gonna yeah, it's gonna recoil like a bit of a bitch. So <laughs> certainly think about that, man. If you're gonna be hunting with it, um, you know, if you're gonna run, I'll probably. Sporter, I'd probably run 180s if I'm going to run a Sporter. Again, over 200, man, and you're going to need a muzzle brake, I think. You're going to need a heavy rifle. Um, but, yeah, man, uh, scope, good quality scope. Hunting, you know, is, what are you doing? Zeiss V4. You've got the uh, Leopold VX5 HDs um, in that price range. Again, what's your budget, dude? What's your budget? You know, if you're just going to hunt, you know, like a, a cheap Bushnell, you know, 3 to 9 by 40. I'm not even sure if they still make the Bushnell 3500s. Um, mate, the sky's your limit, man. I guess we need to know your budget and what you're going to do with it. But it looks like it's a, a hunting rifle, man. So fluted, you know, let us know what you want to do with it. No, he says he wants it for target shooting. So I wouldn't really recommend it if it's only a, fl um, a sporter barrel for target because I've got the 300 rum and I use that for target shooting. And about three shots and it's a heavy barrel. It's uh, pretty much it. It doesn't want to do – it's pretty much just too warm to carry on with. And as you said, the recoil on the sporter barrel will be pretty brutal and it won't be as accurate at longer distances for your target shooting. And as for a scope on my 300 run, which is probably the closest I have, that's comparable. I run the Razor uh, Gen, Gen 1, I think it is. Yep, Gen 1 Razor 5 to yeah. 20 which is a, a very good long-distance scope as well. Yeah. In fact, the Razors are the only Vortex now that I would even touch because they are made in Japan. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't touch the that cheaper stuff. They're look, start, starting from about $2,859, so they're quite, uh, you know, it's going to be definitely up there in price. It says virtually changing the rifle from tactical rifle to a hunting rifle uh, with the perfect grip, et cetera. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I wouldn't, I would, honestly, I wouldn't pick that. If, if you're just going to do target, man, I'd probably maybe pick yourself up a heavy barrel, man. I just, you know, why are you trying to cross two birds or kill two birds with one stone, so to speak? Um, yeah, let, let us know a bit more detail, but I'd probably stick with a heavy barrel, man, if you're just going to, you know, shoot targets or, but if you want to hunt with it, yeah, because you, you shoot three shots, man, after that, it's going to be spray and pray after three shots because that barrel's going to three out of wind mag, you know. Yeah, well, it's equivalent to, um, yeah, pretty much the same as a rum, and you've shot my rum target shooting, and you know how fast that warms up. 
at least it's threaded. So if he wants to put a muzzle brake on it, yeah, that, that'll be an option because you're probably going to need that. You know, again, I see a lot of people doing that, buying sporter rate rifles, you know, and trying to take them to the range and shoot, you know, 20 rounds out of them and wondering why it's not grouping. Like, mate, you're going to get three shots out of them. I, I'm speaking to a guy now who's got a 338 wind mag in a, in a, Tick a light stainless like my seven mag, and it's a third shot. It's starting to spray. Uh, and it's it's just yeah, again two shots, three at best, and you and you start to have heat problems. So think about something else, man. But if you want it and you got your heart set on it, go buy it, man. That's what I say. Yeah, definitely. That's what it's all about. Uh, hardcore unit Remington Jackaroo is a good solid scout rifle. Going back on our other. Uh, comments about scout rifles. I've never used one, uh, but your yeah, scout rifles aren't really all that expensive, and those Remington Jackaroos are made for the Australian market, and they're not very expensive at all. Mm. Uh, yeah, this is a this is a pretty good one from uh, the topmost dog. Love the name. Got to say, the Bushnell AR optics have been great entry level scope for me. I won't ever buy a scope without a parallax adjustment anymore. Not even for a twenty two. Yeah, I agree with that. I had a parallax problems uh, with a, a Hawk scope. Nothing wrong with the scope. It was just basically too close when I was at the fifty meter range for the twenty two. But once I take it out in the in the bush, mate. Again, I know those Bushnell AR optics have got the mill dot, mate. You can get that out. If you're, say, sighting in 50 metres, I reckon you can get that out to 150 before you max out the 5mm five, the five dot reticle. Um, I'm doing it on my T1X at the moment. So, and my mate was just, he was, you know, he was he was shocked as well. He was telling me on the on a, a private property trip we went on, he was like, oh, we're just shooting the rabbit, ding, 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 before we went rabbit hunting just to make sure it was on. And he was like 150 metres with the 22. So, should be good, man. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Okay, convicted Australian. I remember when he brought this rifle. Uh, I thought he did have another topic, another question. Can't find it on him buying this rifle. Well, I, I reviewed this rifle in store at Browns Plains Firearms. Awesome rifle, the Armalite AR three hundred uh, thirty A one. Very nice tactical long distance rifle, uh, and uh, the loophole scope that Aaron talked me into buying for my Armalite AR. R30 is, is smack on the mark for mid to long range shooting but now I'm trying to push for longer range uh, what's a good what's a good well it must be scope for that um, <laughs> you got to finish your sentences guys so we know what you're talking about <laughs> yeah definitely uh, awesome rifle he brought there and he got it for a good price these are like uh, I think don't hold me to it but about 7 grand rifles 8 grand rifles and he got it for around the five grand mark, I think. Uh, it was about a year or so ago. Um, uh, yeah, it's a very nice rifle. Uh, something long distance, um, more than that um, loophole, I would say, once again, the Razor HD, or um, look at start looking at the um, Mark V loopholes, if you like the loopholes. What about the Zeiss V8? Is that going to be in his... Um, um, is that good? Yeah, are they? I don't know if they're actually designed for actual long range target shooting. True, yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, I do believe Zeiss may be coming out with more sort of longer range scopes in the future. I read up somewhere on it. But yeah, if you could get the Zeiss ones, yeah. Zeiss VH nice. I used one uh, on a hunting rifle. I like it. Mm. Um, but yeah, there's so many options. Go for a better one. You got yourself a beautiful rifle there. I'd definitely look at uh, if you like the loopholes, the Mark Fives or the Mark Sixes. Okay, they are about three to four grand if you want to spend that sort of money. Hey, there's uh, a good question there too above the one you just put up there. I think that from that J uh, Jason Pilfoot. That's a very good one. I've had a yep. few friendly arguments around the fire with some mates, and they reckon the Ruger American, uh, the poor man's rifle, is that a fair or BS opinion? All I buy is Ruger. Uh, I, I knew a guy that had a 17 HMR, and he had nothing but problems with it. Uh, nothing but problems. He ended up selling it because, but you know what? 17 HMR is also notorious for um, either feeding and or is ejection problems. So, um, you know, again, you know, you're buying a gun at a price point. You know, again, you're going to get more. When you pay more, you get better quality. It's just how it is, you know. But again, a lot of them probably work really well. So it's just it's just luck of the draw. You may get a bad one. You may get a lemon. Um, 
I always say to guys, buy what you can. If you can need to save up for another couple of months, don't just buy something because you want to get into the market. Save up for a couple of months more. Even if you've got to save up for six months, I think in the long run, you'll be a lot happier with something better. Even if that means, you know, you, you, we're all impatient. We all want to buy now, but, you know, just wait, buy something better. You know, again, not saying they're bad guns. I'm just saying I know people that have had problems with the Aruga Americans, and that's from first hand experiences with good friends of mine. So. Yeah, I've found a few Ruger Americans. I don't mind them at all. I shot the 223. They take the AR-15 Max. Um, that was very accurate on a hunting trip. A guy brought one along, and I really liked it. It was extremely light, and it worked well for pest control. And I've shot a 308 and a couple of others in the past. Never had any problems. I do have a mate who had a problem with the 22 rimfire one. It was yeah, it just wasn't working right out of the box, and he got rid of it. Uh, maybe it's just the rimfire ones that aren't too good because the centerfire ones I've used have worked really well. I've been very happy with them. There we go, something on the V8s. There's yeah, Zyroscope, the boom, the V8 has the best glass I've looked through. That's from JAL Joinery. Yeah, yeah I've the V8. I've got the V4, which I had on the REM mag, and I used to use it on the hunting trip. Didn't shoot anything, but yeah. No problem with those, man. You, that's uh, you know, um, sub or not sub, actually uh, higher, one thousand and higher. You're getting into some decent, you're getting into some good, decent glass, man, for a hunting uh, scope uh, with uh, you know elevation turret. So you're good, good. So V eight's better than that. So yeah, you're going to be getting a good scope. Yep. Um, Rob, hi Aaron. What's going on lately? I wanted to go get my pistol license, and I am a farmer up near Bundaberg. What's the best way to go? Well, just go and uh, do your safety course. I believe they're doing safety courses now. Just get in there and uh, just get onto it and apply online. Do your safety course. They'll fill you in on everything you need to do. Find a local club up there because you got to do it with pistols. You have to do your club shoots. So definitely get up, up onto one of the clubs in Bundaberg and they will push you in the right direction. Uh, there you go, Jase. What have we got, Ross? I can't comment on rifle price, but I spent up to near three thousand dollars for a custom Wilson Combat Beretta ninety two Brigadier Tactical nine mil, mate. If you've got the money, have fun, dude. That's what shooting is all about. Don't worry about the price. Just worry about the credit card later on. <laughs> but yeah, man, I've never seen those ones. But I had a Beretta ninety two FS one time. Obviously, not at that price point. But uh, yeah, yeah, man. Good luck with it, eh? But you shoot it well, and it, you know you're doing some reloading because you're probably going to put some bloody rounds down range with that uh, that pistol. So sweet, man. Yeah, In definitely. Um, sorry, Jason. I stuffed up. I was looking at a message. Did you answer this one? That's Ross. Yeah, go to that one. Yep. Yeah, Ross, done. Yeah, I finished that one. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Okay, I paid. Oh, here we go. Convicted Australian, um, four four thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars for an Armour Light uh, three hundred Win Mag, and put a two thousand dollars scope on it. I hate to think what it would be worth now. Probably quite a bit more. That's for sure. That's one we were just talking about, guys. And he wants to get another scope, a better one. So, yeah, good. I'm sure he's going to have a lot of fun with that. Yeah, I wouldn't be selling that right now, man. You're in, you're in the market. You've got it. Hold on to it. Yeah, definitely. Um, there you go, Jase. Um, what's this? Uh, speak up, rise up. I like that name. Everything is only worth what people are prepared to pay. A 6K rifle is just an expensive dust collector if they can't find a mug to buy it. Yeah, I'd love to find out, you know, with the sales of those, you know, say – three thousand dollars and higher guns how many they're actually selling to the market because I, I don't think you'd find it be a hell of a lot that's for sure um you know and i, and I know yeah. guys that are buying one guy won't say the brand just because i don't want to upset the company but you know, he bought a five thousand dollar rifle and you know it had ejection problems they sent it back um tried to fix it up and and also too as it was coming out it was hitting the receiver and stuff like that and mate after the second time they just they didn't want to know about it and you know, like I would have been a lot. I would have taken it a lot further than that. Like to my, you know, I've paid five thousand dollars, man. I want the, I want that gun work. And so I probably would have went to the tribunal, uh, my state's tribunal, to sort out the. You know, again, it's a gun sale. It's like any other sale around the, you know, 
retail sale. So I would have I would have pursued it further, but you know, ended up selling it off and you know, lost lost about fifteen hundred bucks on it. Jeez. Okay, best entry level handgun, any price range. Well, I would say for myself, I have shot hundreds of different handguns over the years. I'm a big handgun shooter as well. The SIG three P three twenty. It's just a bit of a better quality and a nicer gun to shoot than a Glock. Strike a fire, extremely light, great for IPSC. It's just a very nice gun. What would you say, Jace? Yeah, I mean, I'm not. Bit, you're more handgun orientated than I am, but um, you know, yeah, you just, P- P- Sig P320. I know my mate used to have one of those. Man, geez, they were nice, man. I tell you what, I think he bought some classic edition or some edition one. I know he said it was two gram, and that was like ten years, eight years ago. So I don't know what specific one it was, but it had nice wooden grips. It was a stainless one, very nice. So funky monkey. I'm in the process of getting my H class. I'm looking at getting a CZ. Uh, what is that? Z75 for IPS. So they're going to be world price. Aaron, that's probably better off one for you, mate, I think. Yep, the CZ75 is a very nice gun, a little bit heavy um, if you're going to carry it around. But uh, fortunately, here in Australia, we don't have uh, concealed carry, so that's not really an option. They are very, very solid guns, and a lot of other gun companies sort of imitate the action and the workings of that CZ75. It's like a stable handgun. It's uh, a lot of law enforcement in Europe use them, uh, very, but they are heavy, but I like them. I really do like them. So definitely well worth it, I dare say. We've got a few handgun ones coming up here. Uh, what's the deal with pistol prices? They are more expensive than rifles. Uh, thought about getting a license, but the prices are ridiculous. Yes, they are very, very expensive here compared to other countries. Um, I don't know if it's because they just want to make more money or it's because it's more of a boutique sort of a sport because of all the bullshit we got to go through to get our license and to keep the license um, that they can just justify charging more money. That's my opinion on it. Um, yeah, uh, it is ridiculous for the price. You look at Glocks, 1200 bucks for a Glock, um, and over in America, the 300 bucks. They're like a throwaway disposable gun. So there's not really no reason for it, really. Here we got we got old Corky. <laughs> I love that name, Corky Bees. I've got a Ruger American Stunner's 22, but can't find bullets that it likes. Well, what should I say? Winchester 40 grain, 1280 feet per second. Work great, but they stopped making them. What do you reckon? Mate, try the CCI standards. They're cheap. See if they shoot. I've always had good results in my CZ um, with those in the 455 and the 457. But again, this comes back to uh, you know you've the, the cheaper end of the spectrum in regards to the 22 so um you may not find something that it likes mate you just got to go through just keep buying ammo um you know are you what are your expectations on that rifle to shoot you know under one inch at 50 meters um you know is maybe is a bit too uh, you're expecting a little bit too much possibly um you know again if i'm buying a one thousand dollar and higher 22 i am expecting it to shoot under you know sub one inch at 50 meters otherwise just not good enough in my opinion and it's not going to be good enough for me to shoot especially if you're going to have it to shoot some long range stuff so try that man cci standard uh, pretty good don't go too fast i find if you're shooting fast bullets even the cz's fast bullets just don't group for me they never have stick to that thousand um to, to 1100 1150 i wouldn't go more than that i've found all bullets that i've used even expensive guns don't group for me anyway on guns that I've shot, so. Yeah, I tend to agree with you there. I uh, fight the CCI seem to work in everything. They just work yeah. in absolutely everything. And pistols as well, and pistols they work in too, the little CCI standards, cheap, ready to go. Yep, exactly. Um, Rob Woodworking, um, having guns is, is happiness and having firearms is, is in good condition are an investment. As myself, I am finishing restoring my Pops old 1942 Lithgo, SL, uh, SMLE, S1M3. Yep, definitely. I just restored one a couple of years ago as well. Yeah. A lot of fun to restore, and I really wish I'd made a video on restoring it. It came up absolutely beautiful. I'll show it on the show sometime. Might, might pull it out next week and bring it out. Mm. And here's one for you, Jace. Yeah, go, actually, go to that one above. That's a good one too because that, that comes back yep. to a good point. Chad H., Yep. 
Yeah, so he spent two and a half thousand on his Browning BLR Black Label Takedown 308, 16 inch. It's a trophy for my safe. That's a, I, I see where you're coming from. I'm the same. Um, you know, I, you got to get out and use it though, man. That's why you bought it. You know, I'm a bit of a Aaron knows me. I'm a bit of a safe queen. I don't oh, like yeah. touching each other. Put them in gun socks. I don't want scopes to be knocking each other and, and making you know dings on the scopes. And you know, nah, nah. I see where you're coming from, but get out and shoot it, mate. I think you'd be You'd be much more happier getting out and shoot your investment, man. Uh, Cliff yeah. Lee, Miracu M38 trap, great guns for 2K. Yep, if you're shooting trap, uh, they got that high comb, so you just got to make sure if you're going to shoot trap, that's better. Um, I prefer my sporting shotgun, you know, uh, they're just better. I just like the configuration better, but again, you're not going to use those for trap, but yeah, MK38, good gun, man. Very good gun. Um, will we see you on – okay, it's meant to be uh, Tal Flattermouse. His channel in the US. He's a big gun YouTuber. Well, he uh, has invited me onto his show when I'm over in LA um, or Vegas. He said uh, he'd love to have us on. We have talked quite a bit. And when my channel went down, um, deleted off YouTube, he was one of the only people that actually um, got up and did something for me. He didn't know me for a bar of soap, and he did a big plug on one of his videos that I'll always be grateful for. He's a very nice guy, and, uh, yep, I will definitely, I really hope I am going to go on a show one day, whenever we can travel again one day, if we can ever leave the country. Yep. So, yep, here's hoping. Yeah, good one for me. I can help you with this one. Happy hunt. I've got a Cat C license. Can you guys please talk about semi-autos? I personally wished every licensed gun owner could experience the joys. Yeah, man, true. It depends. Target, I'll go both target and primary producer. If you're a primary producer, I'd get the Benelli M2, mate. Fantastic shotgun. I had one myself uh, for clay targets. Just brilliant, mate. Uh, Inertia-driven. Um, not a lot in regards to um, cleaning. Uh, so easy to clean, much different than the gas-operated stuff. I prefer the inertia-driven. If you're going to go target, if it's a clay target um, and you've got money to spend, I'd look at the Benelli Supersport. I really like the Benelli stuff. Really, really good, man. Benelli M2, man, I wish I hadn't have sold it, to be honest. That was a friggin' brilliant gun. And um, So, again, Benelli M2, I think, if you're going to shoot um, uh, for pest control, like as in on a farm, but if you target, look at the Benelli Super Sport. But you're going to pay, man. I'm, I remember I had the Super Sport years ago as well. I ended up selling that as well. But um, they were shit four grand then, five, four and a half. I don't know what they are now. But yeah, they're, they're, they're nice guns, man. Inertia driven. I would steer clear of gas operated. They're a lot more dirtier. Yeah, and, uh, they, and the gas ports can get clogged up yeah. with uh, lead, lead, the lead in that as well. Mm. Um, Yes, uh, Mark, I am in contact with Honest Outlaws and I want to send out my condolences to him. His father died a couple of days ago. So my condolences, and I'm sure Jason's the same, um, sending out to him. His, um, his uh, father was 80 years old. Uh, I do talk to him a bit and he does actually want to come on to our live cast sometime. One night, he's very keen in doing a show with us. Yeah. Who's that? Me. Rob's woodworking again. Rob's yeah. going off today in the questions. I bought an oh, S8 yeah. 12 gauge and it's great uh, on his Polaris. Yeah, man. Those cheaper, you know, straight pulls, man. If they, if it stays together and it, <laughs> it works, <then laughs> these Turkish guys, hey, hey, I've got a Dickinson myself. I'm just hoping it's going to work. But I swore I'd never buy a cheap shotgun again. But again, I think the straight pull is a better option for 12 gauge than you know, like the Adlers and lever action. I just believe, you know, there's too many issues with lever action shotguns. I had an IAC 1887, had nothing but problems with it. Um, I just don't believe lever action is good for shot shells. They haven't mastered how to make them properly. Um, you know, straight pull, so much better. I mean, basically, I'm not going to say it's just basically a semi-auto with a straight pull, but the, the, basically the action, and it's the same. You just got to manually operate it. It's the same thing, really, except that it doesn't automatically feed. So just a better system. Yeah, yes. Uh, we actually reviewed that, didn't we, Jason? Yeah, the, we uh, it wasn't yeah, bad. And it, and it worked well. I'll have to release it again soon. Okay. Yep. Here's one for you, Jason. Uh, also go, you go. Yep, Tony, I also picked up a new Tika C CTR 308 two weeks ago. What scope would you guys recommend for around $2,000? Well, you've had one of those, haven't you, the CTRs? Yeah, I had the 260 CTR. Again, 
you know, what are you going to do with it? If it's a CTR, I'm going to presume you're shooting long range, two grand. Oh, that's a good question, man. Um, you know, you got your you got your your Zeiss, your Zeiss V4s if you're going to go to hunting. Again, same thing, Leopold VX5 HDs. Um, you know, if you're going to do target shooting, two grand. Uh, what do you think, Aaron? I've, I've got a uh, I've got a Citron S3 for about 1800. You got your Night Force SHV 4 to 14 by 50 F1. Like I said, your Citron S3. I really like that Citron 6 to 24 by 50. Um, what do you reckon, Aaron? What's in your well, thing, you reckon, man? Two grand for a target scope is sort of in between everything. Like you can go the Vortex Viper, which is about eight hundred bucks. Uh, sorry, um, eighteen hundred dollars. That's the Gen Two. But to be honest with you, the Zero Tech top of the line one that I have used and shot at long range is equivalent to that, and it's five hundred dollars cheaper. But then two grand, you've really got to step up to the next level to pushing two and a half to three grand for one like your your striker and um my razors so it's sort of a, you're in lim a bit in limbo at two grand one thing i actually now that I just thought of one if you want 34 mil tube and you are shooting long range and you need that elevation look at the bushnell dmr2 yes yeah, yeah and they're about two grand 260. I had it on the 243, but again, I've had this discussion with Aaron on multiple occasions about if you're going to shoot predominantly target and you're shooting long range, get a 34 mil scope. If you're going to be in the middle, long range hunting and target, um, I'd probably just get a 30 mil tube. You know, your Night Force, your NSX, you've got your, um, your SHV series, you've got, um, I mean, there's plenty there in that particular price range. Some of your Bushnell stuff as well. You've got your, Vorte uh, your Vortex. Uh, uh, Vipers, uh, PST Gen 2s in that price range under two grand. Yeah, that's what I reckon. Okay, now it is time to get political, which we don't normally do on the show. Uh, here we go. I spoke to Jeff Smith of WSAA last night. He hinted at restrictions and coming on straight pull shotguns. Not good. He supported restrictions, typical WSAA type. Uh, he will get uh, gel blasters banned as well. Well, I've heard nothing about restrictions in the industry on the straight pull shotguns and Border Force have been approving new models and I'm pretty sure they won't be approving new models if they're going to um, do restrictions. Typical WSAA bullshit. Uh, they want to see as many guns uh, banned, I reckon. Like, you just can't win, th win with these guys, can you? Uh, I'm uh, looking at this Jeff Smith. I just see a couple of articles uh, from him on double uh, double so obviously he's with double double in some form i mean if people think double double is going to defend your rights man they make money off the nfa uh, again go to your local club support a different club i mean they're never ever going to get your gun rights back if people don't understand that now they never will i, I shouldn't be a hypocrite i'm going to be honest i'm still on a five-year membership i've got two years to go once i stop that i will be going to or that finishes i'm going to go to a different club myself I just think they've had 25 years to do something and they've just done sweet FA. And why would they change gun laws? The, the majority of their profit is based on the National Firearms Agreement. That's where they make money. Do you think if we had pistols like the SIG P320s we've been talking about and then on the cards was being able to shoot your handguns on private property, which you guys would love, do you think SSAA would support that? Absolutely not, because then you're not going to go to their range. You're not going to pay their range fees. They'll be behind the scenes um, fucking you over. So don't do it. Don't join them um, until I'd like to. I wish me and Aaron talk about this all the time. I wish they were the, the organization that was just kicking goals, smashing yep. forward and doing it. But we just know they're not. Everyone with any common sense knows that. You know, it's not about your access to a range and they give me a genuine reason. Guys, you've got to stop looking past your, your, you know, the front of your nose and what only affects you. It's what affects all of us as shooters. Yeah, I just recommend, or you always talked about, go find a small independent club that absolutely everywhere. You support it in your local community, sporting um, centre. It's, it's just a way to go. None of these organisations will get your gun rights back and none of them will really rock the boat no matter who they are. Uh, apparently he writes for WSAA Shooter Magazine. Uh, Go Pro Adventures. Uh, how's the price on Warwick Firearms 2 to 3 these days with the new lightweight versus original uppers? Um, I think they're still very expensive for what they are. 
I think they're all pushing around three grand um, plus. Uh, that's all I know about them. I've shot them, and they're okay. Would not spend the money on them whatsoever. I'd just buy a good bolt gun for myself, but each to their own. The lightweight one is a lot better, that's for sure. It is a lot better because it's a lot lighter. Gee, okay, we're running out of time. We're going to have to quickly that's pick a couple. Old one, that's a good one. Uh, won't be last one. Yeah, the Bet and Soli. Have you guys, Colin Penford? Have you heard of the Bet and Soli shotguns? I don't know anything about them. Yeah, man, I've I've heard good things about them. Actually, um, they're that sort of Miracu MK70 quality, um, from what I'm hearing. And I know a bunch of guys that have got them for their duck guns down in Victoria. And from what I'm hearing, mate, no problems at all. Of course, any gun can be a lemon, but you know, I've heard good things about them, mate. So I don't think you're going to go wrong with, um, you know, like those Miracu MK70s for all the Bet and Solis for your for your duck hunting guns in Victoria. You, you and you can shoot clays with them, thirty inches. Um, the Bet and Solis, I think, are more of the Euro style gun. The, the the Beretta, a little bit lighter, I think, than the American style Miracu based on the Browning. So again, do you want something a bit heavier? Maybe take a bit more recoil, you know, etc. Yeah, definitely. So, um, man, we just got a shit ton of questions here. We can make another show out of this. Uh, it's happened to us again. We try and keep this to around an hour and a half so we don't bore people. Okay, well, we'll pick one each. I'm just going to pick this one here. You pick one you want to talk about, Jason. Uh, I own a Remington 783 in Walnut with a Hawk 4 to 12 on it. A great gun for under $1,000. Yes, it is. I It was on the top five list I just put out on under a thousand dollars they are very good the, just put a review out on one as well they are great rifles for the money and i have to say it they are actually better than the 700s the base model 700s i'd say because they do have a nicer trigger and they're a stronger they feel like a stronger action so what do you want to talk about jace last just, just one go up about four it's david Kerte, k-e-r-t-a-i this is a funny one Sort yep. of you said that one. So he goes, no laws are different here. But I went to an SSA club once with a Ruger Charger 22 LR, and the guy working there uh, took some photos of me and my friend shooting, and I got an audit two weeks later. Again, yeah, we can't bear oh. the veracity of that claim, but you know, I mean, you know, I know there was an issue a couple of years ago when I was doing the podcast where they were not letting. They, remember those charges, Aaron? I don't know which range it was, but they, I don't know if it was double S, double A, but they didn't want the Ruger charges on their rain. They were basically saying, this is not a pistol. This is a rifle. So, yeah. you know, if, if it's true, again, I'm not verifying the veracity of the claim, but, you know, it, would it surprise you? It, it shouldn't surprise you. It's double S, double A. It shouldn't surprise you. Well, well, I took my Ruger Charger that's all done up, still legal length, legal pistol. I took it down to the WSAA FUD farm a few years ago and they wouldn't allow me to shoot it at all. They, the old guys there kicked up a stinky thought. Um, you know, I was holding them up at gunpoint. They just carried on and on. And the president came out and said, you can't shoot it here. He said, that's an AR-15. That's not a, uh, that's not a pistol. Ooh, so, yeah. 15. Yeah. So, uh, yep. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I do agree. They have their being a bonnet for those. And I've heard from several people that you can't shoot them at different clubs. And they're all being the FUD farm, WSAA clubs. So, it's definitely, uh, yep, yeah, I think that could have some substance to that, to that story, I think, because, uh, yep, yeah, I've seen it firsthand with my Ruger Charger. So, Ooh. guys, uh, anything else we want to say, Jason? Just sorry we couldn't answer more of these questions, guys. We started this thinking nobody would watch, and, um, you know, we've got a good little loyal following, man. So thank you for that. Yes, definitely. We, um, yeah, we love engaging with you. Jason, we've been talking about it for a couple of years. How can we really engage with our audience on a one-to-one -one level and we – Reckon this was the way to do it. Once a week, keep it short and sweet, at about an hour and a half. And, yeah, it just keeps you interested, and we love it too. And you got any uh, any topics you want us to talk about, send them to Jason or me through all our social medias, and we'll get around to it. We have probably the next five weeks filled with topics. Uh, next week's going to be a bit of a show-and-tell topic as well. And, yeah, definitely thank you so much, guys. And please go and listen to Jason's podcast that you can find on 
I am um, AustralianHuntingPodcast.com. Is that right? Dot, dot AU. Dot AU. <laughs> Almost got it this time. And, uh, yeah, great podcast. New one coming out every two weeks. But what's uh, what's coming up next for your podcast? Um, I never said I would – I wasn't really interested in possibly – we don't mention it, but uh, doing politicians again. But I did get contacted by a politician from uh, – one of the major parties wanting to do an interview with me actually and asking whether I'd be interested. So um, I don't really want to do politics. I think it's a waste of time. I think people have, you know, uh, we've people are sick of politicians. They're sick of being lied to about what people can do. But you know what? I might give this person the benefit of the doubt. I might interview them, record it, give it to a few friends, see how it goes, then consider releasing it possibly. So we'll see how that goes. Maybe record that next week. Yeah, it'll definitely be a hard one because of their stance in the past of supporting the NFA, but also they believe that they are a um, pro-gun, which obviously they're not if they support the NFA. So it'd be a hard one to interview. You, I think you're going to have to sort of... Away, bot- you get too many details. And you're going to have to bite your tongue. <laughs> so, but, uh, yeah, so definitely, guys, uh, if you could hit the like button and because it helps with the algorithm and all that crap and if you could definitely subscribe to this channel and find us in the description down here on where you can see us all over social media and thank you very much for coming along tonight and listen to us talk and we'll see you next week and get your questions ready for next week uh ones we didn't didn't get to uh get them in lunchtime next thursday and we'll do our best to read them all out So have a great and safe week, guys, and happy shooting. Thank you.